Hey, what's up spooky fam? Today we're going to talk documentaries. I am a big fan of documentaries and this list here is not going to just solely be horror movies. There's going to be other kinds of documentaries on here, but I just want to put these on your radar. So this list is 10 documentaries I cannot stop thinking about. These are all more recent documentaries, I would say at least within the past 8 to 10 years, um, with the exception I believe of the last two, but these are just really, uh, some are very harrowing documentaries that if you guys like a uh, very real, very visceral, very, um, I don't know, something that hits you right where it hurts, uh, a documentary, uh, check out something on this list. So if you guys enjoyed, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more, check out all of my links down below if you would like to see any more of me or support the channel. And let's start all the way at the back with number 10 and Icarus, directed by Brian Fogel. While investigating the world of illegal doping in sports, director Brian Fogel connects with renegade Russian scientist Dr. Grigory Rojenchkov. <laughs> Please forgive me, I am terrible with pronouncing names, but let me just tell you right now, Grigory is the most charming man you will see in a situation like this. Like, he is just so happy, so uh, just... A joyous man and he seems so kind and no wonder why he really roped Brian Fogel in. <laughs> Anyways, Grigory is in deep with his country's anti-doping program. Over dozens of Skype calls, urine samples, and badly administered hormone injections, Fogel and Rachenchkov grow closer despite shocking allegations that place Rojenchkov at the center of Russia's state-sponsored Olympic doping program. And at one point, Vladimir Putin gets involved <laughs> and you just don't expect that to happen. Um, so if you guys like things that have to do with uh, the Olympics, uh, I, I really like documentaries. There's a couple on my list, my watch list, that have to do with uh, athletes and things like that. I just f find the world of uh, athletes to be fascinating for someone who is the laziest person to exist. <laughs> so moving on to number nine, uh, a documentary that was introduced to me as the untitled Amazing Jonathan documentary and this goes in places you, I, I, <laughs> This is like documentaryception. <laughs> this one is directed by Ben Berman and others. <laughs> what begins as a documentary following the final tour of a dying magician ends as a clusterfuck of storytelling when the filmmaker struggles to separate truth from illusion. And I'm just gonna spoil this for you. Uh, if you don't want a spoiler, please click off. Um, there ends up being four documentary crews that uh, are in this film because the amazing Jonathan just keeps like wanting people to cover his life so he just keeps saying yes to whoever wants to make a documentary about them so you just have all these cameras filming and it's like what's happening? Unfortunately the amazing Jonathan passed away recently uh, but he did live a lot longer than I was expecting him to after this film because at one point he literally uh, gets the director to smoke meth with him? So, just do with that information what you will. <laughs> Number eight is a documentary that I just re-watched recently and had Alex watch because I loved it so much. Number eight is Shirkers, directed by Sandy Tan. In 1992, teenager Sandy Tan shot Singapore's first road movie with her quote-unquote mentor, George, who then vanished with all of the footage. 
And he, I want to punch this man right in the face, like still to this day. 20 years later, the 16 millimeter film is recovered, sending Miss Sandy Tan herself on a personal journey in search of what was taken from her. And this one, like you get to the end and you, you like, she recovers the footage and you're just like, yes, yes, yes. And then there's no sound and it's like, oh my God. But it's so good and it's so interesting to see how she's shooting a documentary now interviewing the people she made this movie with and then you get to see them shoot the movie as they were as teenagers as a group and it, it just the contrast in their lives is so interesting to watch okay number seven is also one that i made alex watch because this one is a lot of these i had seen and then i just needed alex to see them because sometimes documentaries just stick with me in a way that I need someone else to experience it and that's what happened with my Scientology movie by Louis Thoreau. Okay well it's not by Louis Thoreau it's directed by a guy named John Dower but Louis Thoreau goes through the ringer for this documentary and okay they end up making a whole film about Louis Thoreau making a film about them. Scientology is weird. Scientology is scary. Louis Thoreau dives into the complex and scary world of Scientology. Inspired by the church's use of filmmaking techniques and aided by the ex-members of the organization, Louis tries to better understand why the church operates the way it does. In a bizarre twist, like I said, the church is also filming Louis and they are just so relentless, these people. They stop him in the middle of the road, they yell at him, they scream at him, they follow him in airports, they're like everywhere. And it's just so scary the way that they just come out of the woodwork and yell and attack and I don't know. It's so scary to see how fast people can get brainwashed into this. Actually, I do, I've shown it before, but I do have, I have a book uh, written by L. Ron Hubbard and it makes me feel a little uncomfy that it's in my home, you know, but I had to buy it. <laughs> so moving on to number six and this one is a little bit lighter uh, presented but with dark themes and that is Dick Johnson is Dead directed by Kristen Johnson, his daughter. Uh, this movie deals with themes of dementia and if that makes you upset in any way, I just want to put that out there. Kristen Johnson seeks a way to keep her 86 year old father alive forever. Using movie magic and her family's dark humor, she celebrates Dr. Dick Johnson's last years by staging fantasies of death and beyond. Together, dad and daughter confront the great inevitability awaiting us all and the way these scenes are shot, she does this thing where she frames what Dick Johnson would think heaven would be like and it's all like flowers and like happiness and people but it's like a dark sad story because he's like losing his mind and all this stuff but it's just juxtaposed with all these like happiness like uh, it's just it's such as I was bawling by the end of it and it was just a really fantastically done documentary. Another one that I absolutely love uh so Alex and I both uh, are really big fans of skateboarding and like that kind of culture and Minding the Gap directed by Bing Liu is one that I've seen I think three times now. I have the criterion on my wish list. I will leave it linked down below. Um, I Minding the Gap is about three boys whose friendship just goes awry um, and uh, if you have ever had a group of friends kind of go south I feel like you can relate a little more with that kind of story. But let me tell you, I think about Bing Lu's mom every single day of my life. <laughs> she is the sweetest woman ever. Three young men bond together to escape volatile family lives in their hometown. As they face adult responsibilities, unexpected revelations threaten their decade-long friendship. And I feel really good every time I hear that Bing Lu has come out with a new short or working on a new a new project because you see him as like a little teen like with his camera making all these like little skate videos and now he's directing full-length features 
that is fantastic it's so inspirational to me okay we're at number four and this one is heavy uh, I feel like my channel could get like put on a list for me even talking about this uh, documentary but number four is assassins this one was directed by Ryan White and just came out a few years ago, so if that sounds familiar to you and you haven't seen it, it is a freaking crazy story. True crime meets global spy thriller in this account of the assassination of Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of the North Korean leader. The film follows the trial of two female assassins asking the question, were the women trained killers or innocent pawns of North Korea? And you see that CCTV footage of the assassination and it's fucking scary. <laughs> because these women just think they're doing something good. They're doing a job. They're doing whatever. And they kill somebody. And Jesus Christ, it happens so fast. Number three on this list is Some Kind of Heaven, directed by Lance Oppenheim. Uh, Oppenheim, like the Oppenheim group. <laughs> Selling Sunset fans, raise your damn hand. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, this one is a documentary about an old folks community uh, place, which the the movie is or the documentary is shot in four three, and it has this really ominous undertone. The way there's like a weird filter that really makes it feel oversaturated, but so dreary at the same time and I have pulled a lot of inspiration from that and I feel like you guys will see very soon where I pulled a lot of inspiration from that but Some Kind of Heaven is also a freaking wild documentary. Behind the gates of a palm tree lined fantasy land Three residents and one interloper at America's largest retirement community strive to find happiness and you just see all of these people like doing things, you know, kind of lonely, whatever. And then this man is just like out in his trailer snorting coke, going on joy rides in golf carts. It's just a very weird placement. <laughs> it's a great watch though. Number two, these two are older now. We're gonna throw it back a little bit, but these two, I believe you can find them both on YouTube if I'm not mistaken. But number two is Jesus Camp. And if uh, anything like extreme religious things make you uncomfortable, this will definitely make you uncomfortable. Jesus Camp follows children at a Christian summer camp as they hone their prophetic gifts and are schooled in how to take America back for Christ and you just see these kids be indoctrinated right in front of your eyes and it's fucking this is it's free birth control <laughs> and number one on this list is one that absolutely kills me i have seen this one three times i own it on dvd this is dear zachary a letter to a son about his father Holy shit, if you have not seen this documentary, I will say it does drag a little bit, but it is worth it in the end. This one is directed by Kurt Kuhn, I believe his last name is, but he, he was Andrew Bagby's best friend, uh, and you'll learn so much about this Andrew Bagby as you watch this documentary, but to see someone who was so close to him make such a heartfelt documentary when the shocking revelation at the end happens, it punches you right in the face every time. I bawl my eyes out every time I watch this. In 2001, Andrew Bagby, a medical resident, is murdered not long after breaking up with his girlfriend. Soon after, when said girlfriend announces she's pregnant, one of Andrew's best friends, Kurt, begins the film A Gift for His Child. And, oh my gosh, if this isn't the saddest documentary I've ever seen in my life, I'm gonna just put a spoiler alert right now because I have to talk about it. Um, the baby dies. And they, the baby is also murdered. And when you get to that, it is like, 
oh my god and like you see andrew's dad in this movie like look right at the camera and he goes like you fucking bitch like he like lays into the woman that killed his son his grandson like took everything away from him like the way he addresses her every single time just makes me just bawl my eyes out holy shit that one just is a gut punch and i really i like i desperately want you all to see it because that is a documentary that just makes you want to hold your loved ones a little bit closer. So that is all. <laughs> if you guys would like another list like this, let me know. We've got lots more content like this coming up, so please go ahead and request some lists down below. I would love to uh, d do a little more of a deep dive into things. So let me know which of these you've seen. Let me know which uh, you want to see. Hopefully it is some kind of heaven hopefully it is assassins uh just watch one of these please report back <laughs> and i will see you guys in the next video sayonara spooky fam